I've got some work to do on a feeder tomorrow, but I've also got a little bit of extra time, so I thought I would do a 16 bullet 6.5 Creedmoor expansion test. If y'all don't remember, about a month and a half ago, I had a flood and I had a whole bunch of papers that got mildewy and some books that are pretty much destroyed. So this is gonna be my medium to test. I know it's not the best, but I'm hoping that this 10 inches worth of paper that's really solid and thick should capture the bullets, I hope. I went ahead and wrote down all of the bullets where I want them to roughly impact. I'm not shooting for accuracy because these are all different dopes, obviously, um, but I just need a location of where the bullet is gonna impact. I believe they should stop within the first 10 inches here, but just in case it does go through, I've got that behind there. Unfortunately, I have to shoot using my tripod. I shoot more accurately shooting prone like most people do, but because of the grass and the situation I'm shooting, I'll just have to shoot that way. So we'll give this a go. Okay, impact, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh-oh, one missed. Well, it looks like we lost one bullet here. Yep. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh? Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so whatever this shot was here, I'm going to assume that's probably the Lehigh Defense. So my last test batch are going to be the hammer bullets from 110 grains all the way to the sledgehammer. That's 135 grains. If I'm worried about any bullet going through all of this, it would be these hammers. Let's give these a go. The only question that I have is did it blow through? Did not. Awesome. So we captured them all. Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't look good. I don't see anything, so hopefully it's in here. Here are the results of the 16 bullet test for the 6.5 Creedmoor. I've said it a million times on this video, I'm gonna say it again. Paper is not the best medium to be testing uh, bullet expansion, but I did learn a couple of things uh, along the way. So what I'm gonna do is uh, give you a rundown on everything and then tell you which bullets I would use and not use on North American game species and uh, the logic why uh, behind that. I am gonna be running the light on my camera, so I apologize if the color's off and let's get started with this. In this first batch, these are lead type bullets that have some kind of a soft point or lead core that is inside of it, minus the Hornady Black, and I will talk about that one separately. As you guys know, I am a huge propo proponent of soft point bullets or lead core bullets. So if you live in a state like California or any other place that doesn't allow lead, just ignore this section. I'll give you the time frame of how to jump forward to the black ammo. I'm really not gonna talk about this much and just kind of show you. Uh, this is the Hornady 123 grain SST. This is a hand load. And this is gonna vary in weight and lead capacity just because of the, the bullet size. The next one is a 143 grain ELDX. The next one is the 160 grain round nose interlock bullet. And then what you have here is the interesting Winchester Dur Season XP 125 grain. Oh, those traveled 10 inches. That's what those numbers mean there. Traveled roughly about 10 inches in depth. Um, because of this is a lighter weight with the 125, it only traveled about eight inches. And this is a box load ammo. And I could probably run that a little bit hotter and get it to a 10 inch depth. I'm gonna skip the Hornady real quick. The Remington Core Lock also traveled about 10 inches. Nice lead core there. And the non-typical Federal, also a nice lead core there, and those also traveled 10 inches. So uh, the Hornady Black is an ammo that's not really intended for hunting. I think it's more or less just a target ammo, a hollow point. I wouldn't have any qualms using these on a varmint, and I have killed a hog with this, so I would have no qualms using it on a hog again. But as you can tell, it flakes out a lot, and it shoots a lot of its uh, material outward. So it's not intended for hunting. The last statistic that I read says that most game animals are shot roughly about 75 yards. Now there is a lot of skewed information taken into that average. 
we're talking everything from like flint knock to pistol to bows to crossbows to traditional shooting to traditional rifles to uh, modern sport rifles long range rifles and it also has the caveat of the very thick east part of the united states very uh, thick part of the southern part of the u.s the north prairies out to the open west so 75 yards is the average any of these bullets even including the hornady black is going to perform fine with proper shot placement and so if you know you're going to be definitely pushing distance and i mean true long range like where you actually have to dial up and start using other equipment to range in that animal above 400 yards easily for the 6.5 Creedmoor, have a rule that you carry. Uh, for me, uh, my rule is, is that for all deer species, uh, mule deer, um, antelope, uh, whitetail, um, black, any deer species that are the smaller deer species, I have a rule of 700 foot pounds of energy being dumped into the animal. Now, when it comes to the bigger size animal, for me, I include um, bear, elk, and hogs in the same category, I like a thousand foot pounds of energy being dumped into the animal. Now, if you're going for like the biggest species, which is a moose, I like to have a general rule of 1,200 foot pounds of energy being dumped into the animal. In our second group, we have got a mixed batch of everything from hollow points, to soft points, to copper monolithics, to hybrids. So let's start breaking these down one by one. The first one is a 100 grain Sierra hollow point. As you can tell, there is not a lot of material there as uh, most hollow points do, they shed their jacket. And so there was a little bit of a core left. It traveled only six inches, but that's primarily because of its weight and the type of bullet that it is. It's a varmint bullet. The next one is a soft point. This is the Spear 120 grain gold dot. And I know there is a 140 grain version of this now. This does have a lead core here and it traveled eight inches in depth. The next two are our monolithic bullets in the group. The first one is a Barnes 100, 120 grain TAC X boat tail bullet. As most um, copper monolithic bullets do, it retained almost 100% of its weight capacity. The next one is the 122 grain controlled chaos. Also, it retained almost 100% of its weight, but the way the controlled chaos work is that it sheds its petals off. Um, unlike the Barnes is designed to do. Though the Barnes did shed one off, that's not the way it's designed to um, function. But again, we were shooting in paper. The next one is a very unique bullet. This is an Alco. This is primarily a very long range target bullet that has a very high ballistic coefficient. As you could tell, it is a hollow point. It shed a lot of its material. There is a little bit of a jacket left here. And there is the point there. That's pretty cool. And you can see it here. And finally, we've got our Berger 140 grain VLD Hunter bullet. And this is another hollow point bullet. And out of this entire group, out of this entire batch of bullets, this is the one that retained the least amount of material. Though there is a core, it pretty much shed. And those who are familiar with Berger know that their reputation is that it sheds a lot of its weight off. Um, and that also traveled 10 inches, very similar to most of these bullets. Most of these bullets travel 10 inches minus the lighter ones. I'm not a proponent of using a hollow point bullet inside of a game animal, particularly if you're trying to retain a lot of the meat. I used to volunteer my time at a taxidermy office when one of my buddies would get busy, he would call me in and I would just go in there and help him uh, peel off the hides of these deer. And um, in doing that, we knew instantly when somebody used a hollow point or a varmint type bullet because right under the hide where the bullet impact, there would be a massive palm size explosion and all of that meat would be lost and if you hit uh, your deer in the shoulder with that you're definitely going to lose all of that meat the way a hollow point bullet is designed to perform is that it sheds a lot of its um, jacket instantly at the point of impact now there is usually some kind of a core that's left there and that's what kills uh, the animal uh, because it hits some kind of material so in saying that there's basically two bullets that i would use when it comes to hunting all north american game animal especially when i'm trying to retain the meat it would be the gold dot and i would step this up to the 140 grain version because it has a lead core and then the Barnes um, tack bullets, any of the Barnes bullet, because it's a copper monolithic bullet and it retains almost 
percent of its weight uh, blowing um, through that. Now, have I killed a hog with all of these bullets? The answer is yes, but one. And that is the um, controlled chaos bullets here. I find the last batch of bullets in the group comes to us from Hammer Bullets out of Big Fork, Montana. These are copper monolithic bullets. The first one on the left is a 110 grain Hammer Hunter. The next one is the 124 grain Hammer Hunter. And finally we have the 130 grain Sledgehammer. Uh, what I was surprised at the most out of testing these is the bullet in the middle, this 124 grain bullet, is the one that penetrated the deepest. And I don't think, and they'll correct me if I'm wrong about this, I don't think the bullet is intended to shed these off. I think it's just the compression of the book that shed off these material. I think they're supposed to flatten like soft points, um, as you can see there. Uh, their philosophy is minimal game loss with um, deep penetration and you can go to their website you can see that they've taken animals uh, out in africa and so when it comes to shooting any north american game animal i have no doubt these hammer hunters will take down the smallest um, game animal smallest deer all the way up to the largest elk i would uh, tell you to get hold of steve davis at hammer hunters and he will get you connected to the right bullet and probably the right load for your caliber this is my final outtake from my 16 bullet review. You're shooting a 6.5 Creed more. You're shooting a 6.5 Creed more. You're shooting a 6.5 Creed more. That's all that needs to be said. But in all reality, no matter what bullet you guys choose to hunt with this year, you are going to be dumping so much energy into the game animals that most guys will be hunting and girls. For example, Hornady publishes a 27. 2700 FPS velocity out of their 143 grain ELDX boxed ammo. Now they're probably using like a 28 inch barrel in order to achieve those velocities and most of us will probably never use that. But using that as our medium, you're not sloping off a thousand foot pounds of energy until you're getting up to 700 yards depending on your altitude. And I'm going to assume that's going to be less than 5% of our population that will ever hunt at those distances. So my final advice is this, find you a very accurate bullet. If you really want to retain your meat, use a copper monolithic bullet, either by Hammer or Barnes. Um, if you're cheap, and there's a lot of people, I don't know why, but they choose to shoot cheap ammo out of their gun. Find you an accurate soft point bullet. You won't have as much uh, meat loss as you would with a hollow point. Aim small, kill small, send me your pictures, and I'll post um, all of these pictures at the end of deer season. Good luck, and stay tuned for my next adventure, and I hope you've enjoyed this video series. You're shooting a 6.5 Creed more. That's all I need.